Now then, people, welcome to ThriveHealth.tv. It's uh, your host, Paul, again here. Just a uh, quick blog today um, on the top five non-healthy health foods, starting today with soy. Um, I was originally going to leave this until last and go in reverse order, starting at number five and finishing with soy as my number one unhealthy health food, but just purely because of the number of people consuming soy products thinking it's a healthy healthy, a healthy food, I just had to do it today. So probably going to burst a few bubbles with this, uh, this series of blogs. Um, going to be some truth bombs dropped, some long-held myths debunked, um, but we're going to start off, as I say, with soy today. So the first point to address is probably why I actually need to go about and do this in the first place. Um, why are we in the belief that these foods are healthy for us? How do we get it so wrong? Um, well, most of the time it's not our fault. Most of the time these these products are being touted, sold to us as healthy healthy foods. Um, usually by big business, it's usually some someone making some money off it somewhere. Um, what I'm hopefully going to do with this, this series is give you an unbiased opinion on what's going on with these foods. We've been told that this product is going to do everything from cure ingrowing toenails to baldness. Um, it's actually been claimed that there has benefits in reducing cholesterol, reducing the risk of heart disease, reducing the risk of cancer, um, and it's just everywhere as well. You know, you go into the Whole Foods at the moment, and it's it's on every single shelf. There's there's whole there's um, soy milk, there are soy crisps, soy yogurts. Um, kind of vegetarian products that are meant to look a bit like meat. No idea why vegetarians want to eat things that look, look and taste like meat, but you better ask them. Um, and, you know, it's becoming such a problem and people just do not realise that there are health risks associated with consuming soy. So that's what I'm going to go on to next and explain the health impacts. Okay, so the first um, health impact we're going to take a look at is um, estrogen. Um, the soy itself uh, actually produces or contains uh, plant estrogens. Now these aren't exactly, they're not exactly identical to human, to human hormones, human estrogens, but they will uh, change uh, estrogen levels. They will either increase or decrease estrogen in, in women. They closely resemble the body's own estrogens. As I say, it's not identical. Um, but obviously this becomes a problem. Um, estrogen is, a, is a, a potent factor in breast cancer risk, for example, so a high consumption of soy can potentially be increasing your risk of breast cancer. Um, infertility. Plant estrogens will interfere with the human hormones, as I've mentioned. Uh, we need these for, for normal uh, sexual function and reproduction. Um, they, they do, soy will lower the quality and the, the motility of sperm as well. So the next health implication we're going to talk about is thyroid function. Um, the uh, soybean will contain isoflavones and these are going to uh, interfere with the enzyme that we need to um, produce uh, the thyroid hormones, T3 and T4. Um, and again, in, um, in her book, The Whole Soy Story, uh, Kayla Daniel claims to have over 40 years worth of studies that show thyroid impairment from a high soy uh, diet. Uh, and this can lead to, to many problems, including weight gain, um, sort of malaise, low energy, loss of libido, hair thinning. Um, and a, a, a Japanese study um, actually found that just 35 milligrams of isoflavones per day um, caused thyroid suppression in healthy individuals in just three months. Um, and Kayla Daniel suggests that it depends on the um, on the, 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 the uh, individual milk product or the uh, the brand, the year, the growing conditions, and so on, that the average glass of soy milk will contain about 45 milligrams of isoflavones. So you can do the math. It's not going to be a, a healthy outlook if you keep consuming that soy milk. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is um, the anti-nutrients that are actually contained in the soy. Um, so I know a lot of you, especially the guys out there who uh, work train, um, probably uh, using something like a, a protein powder or something like that. Um, go to your cupboard, grab your um, tub of protein, check the label, check to see if it contains some uh, any soy protein isolate. 
If it does, the chances are that you're actually impairing your protein absorption by taking soy protein isolate. Um, it actually absorb, uh, actually um, uh, restricts your ability to utilize the protein in a, that protein shake. It's, it's a huge paradox, a huge contradiction, really, but that's what's happening. The, the trypsin inhibitors make it hard to digest soy um, and therefore to gain any of the nutrients that are actually tied up in there. Um, there is high cysteine levels in soy, but it's pretty much rendered unusable by the body due to the trypsin in inhibitors in the, in the, in the product itself. Okay, so I wanted to keep this video quite short, so I'm going to finish off there. I'm going to put some more information down in the blog just down there. Um, so go and, uh, go ahead and read that. I'm also going to put a couple of references down there as well. If you do want a bit more information on soy, um, that you can go to a couple of uh, there's a great website which is the Western A Price Foundation. Um, not just about soy, it's about lots of health and, and nutrition related topics on there. You can pick up the book, The Whole Soy Story by Kayla T. Daniel um, or if you want some more information or references you can email me at admin at thrive-health.tv or comment just below um, or drop me an email or contact me on Facebook. Um, okay, I'll uh, hear from you next time. I'm going to uh, do my number two unhealthy health food on milk next time. So I hope you'll tune in for that. Great. Thanks a lot, guys. See you soon. Bye.